Grace Church Cathedral. This is evening prayer and a meditation for Thursday, August the 3rd. Evening prayer begins on page 117. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 74. O God, why have you utterly cast us off? Why is your wrath so hot against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your congregation that you purchased long ago, the tribe you redeemed to be your inheritance in Mount Zion where you dwell. Turn your steps toward the endless ruins. The enemy has laid waste everything in your sanctuary. Your adversaries roared in your holy place. They set up their banners as tokens of victory. They were like men coming up with axes to a grove of trees. They broke down all your carved works with hatchets and hammers. They set fire to your holy place. They defiled the dwelling place of your name and raised it to the ground. They said to themselves, Let us destroy them all together. They burned down all the meeting places of God in the land. There are no signs for us to see. There is no prophet left. There is not one among us who knows how long. How long, O God, will the adversary scoff? Will the enemy blaspheme your name? Why do you draw back your hand? Why is your right hand hidden in your bosom? Yet God is my king from ancient times, victorious in the midst of the earth. You divided the sea by your might. You shattered the heads of the dragons upon the waters. You crushed the heads of Leviathan and gave him to the people of the desert for food. You split open spring and torrent. You dried up ever-flowing rivers. Yours is the day, yours also the night. You established the moon and the sun. You fixed all the boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. Remember, O Lord, how the enemy scoffed, how a foolish people despised your name. Do not hand over the life of your dove to wild beasts. Never forget the lives of your poor. Look upon your covenant. The dark places of the earth are haunts of violence. Let not the oppressed turn away ashamed. Let the poor and the needy praise your name. Arise, O God, maintain your cause. Remember how fools revile you all the day long. Forget not the clamor of your adversaries, the unending tumult of those who rise up against you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that all the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everybody's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Do not harm yourself, we are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, 
The jailer took them and washed their wounds, and then immediately he and all his family were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. When it was daylight, the magistrates sent their officers to the jailer with the order, Release those men. The jailer told Paul, The magistrates have ordered that you and Silas be released. Now you can leave. Go in peace. But Paul said to the officers, They beat us publicly without a trial, even though we are Roman citizens, and threw us into prison. And now do they want to get rid of us quietly? No, let us let them come themselves and escort us out. The officers reported this to the magistrates, and when they heard that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, they were alarmed. They came to appease them and escorted them from the prison, requesting them to leave the city. After Paul and Silas came out of the prison, they went to Lydia's house, where they met with the brothers and encouraged them. Then they left. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we continue with our exploration of the Acts of the Apostles and the sort of the episodes uh, involving St. Paul and, and sort of his beginning, uh, beginnings of his journeys where he is converting essentially the Mediterranean world. And on this occasion, he is in prison. He has been thrown into prison, um, publicly accused, he's thrown into prison. And as the story tells us, there's an earthquake. It looks like all the prisoners are, are, are escaped. And the guard draws his own sword to kill himself. That might sound a little strange, but um, it does sort of make sense. If you're a prison guard and you're tasked with guarding the prisoners, and it looks as though all of them have escaped under your watch, you're probably not going to be tre treated with much lenience. It's probably going to be uh, bad news for you come morning when everyone, is, everyone finds out that the prisoners under your watch have all escaped and you're going to wind up uh, being executed. So that's, that's why the, the guard pulls his sword. But look at what Paul and Silas do. Paul says, do not harm yourself. We're all here. Meaning that even though Paul and all of his companions could have taken advantage of the situation to escape, they decide not to. Instead, they stay put. And what that winds up doing is it, it allows this Roman centurion, this Roman soldier, this jailer, to hear the message of salvation that will come to them. So taking advantage when, when we're presented with an opportunity, um, if that means someone else being harmed, is a good lesson for us. Shouldn't do it. We should not always take advantage of every single opportunity or every single situation that arises, especially if it might wind up hurting someone else. But again, this is, I, I do find this another uh, an interesting object lesson in timidity or humility. Um, when Jesus talks about us, uh, the meek inheriting the earth, we might conjure up in our, in our minds this idea that we need to be sort of shrinking violets and not ever um, be assertive, not ever actually stand up for our own rights or not ever uh, say anything that would might um, get us into trouble. But here's what happens with Paul. He's been wrongfully accused, he's been thrown into prison, and he says something to the effect of, you have uh, shamed us, you've thrown us into prison without a proper trial, all that sort of thing, and we're Roman citizens, which carried a tremendous amount of weight in, in the first century in this area. And the magistrates are just terrified by this. The, oh, oh goodness, you know, we have bullied these people, and they're actually standing up for themselves now. We're the ones that have to sort of do a little, back, little, bit, of, little bit of backpedaling. And I don't think that Paul was using his status as a, a Roman citizen uh, in a way that would sort of run contrary to his faith. I think Paul was using every tool at his disposal in order to try to spread the gospel as far and as effectively as he possibly could. And if that meant that he was going to have to stand up to some bullies and try to get, uh, get them to get out of his way, that was fair enough. And I do think that that's a good lesson for us because that's not something we don't need to, to be shrinking back. Um, as, as evangelists, I think that we do need to be a little assertive every once in a while to say, you know, we, can, we do have a message that's worth hearing. We do have a message that's worth sharing. We do have all of this rich tradition, all of this, this good, these good things. We can do a little bit more uh, of a, a, 
we could do a better job at, at kind of putting ourselves out there, if you will. And again, this story that, that has uh, Paul and Silas going on and, and being sent on their way is a sort of testimony to that, that they are trying their best to spread the gospel and doing whatever they can to make sure that there's no obstacles in its way. And they keep moving. Um, they keep moving right along. And so, again, that's a, a good lesson for us that if we're finding it difficult to, to spread the gospel in our own context, try, try something else. Try a different way. Try a different location. Um, move right along. But keep moving. Never give up hope that the Word of God and the gospel will spread. Amen. We continue with the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses, we entreat you, O Lord. That there may be peace to your church and to the whole world, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may depart this life in your faith and fear, and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit, in the communion of all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ, we entreat you, O Lord. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide we may so pa pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this life may rest in your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. 
pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. This time I invite your own intercessions and thanksgivings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now may the road rise to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. May the sun shine warmly on your face and the rain fall softly on your fields. And until we meet again, God keep you in the palm of his hand. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.